on a slab of stone Well the world's still there But the outside's gone Ain't that a way to make the wheel go more Ain't that a way to make the wheel Welcome YouTube Spaceman here Okay um, Tonight I've got My favorite all time cigar That's right This is a Java, Java. It's a coffee cigar. Mm. This cigar is delectable. Let me tell you, and it is without a doubt my favorite. And along with a great cup of Maxwell House coffee. Freshly pressed in my French press. Hmm. What a combination, huh? Great. Um, just the right ingredients um, ripe for a good story. And I have a good story for you. Well, you may or may not consider it a good story. I mean, uh, it's just a story from my childhood. And in the story, I was 11 years old at the time. I was living up in New Jersey. And I had an older brother, and he was seven years older than me. So I was about, oh, I want to say maybe eight, nine years old, ten years old, anywhere in that range from eight to eleven years old. So my brother, my parents would uh, take my brother over to see his friends or something. He'd go, he was about, um, you know, he's a teenager, uh, anywhere from fifteen to nineteen, what, 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 fifteen, sixteen, anywhere in that range and didn't have his driver's license. He was even younger than that because, no, well, somewhere around there anyway. So, they would take him, you know, so he'd be gone for a while. So, he had this massive record collection in this room in the basement. He had this really cool record collection. I mean, it was just, it just blew me away. And it was all kinds of groups in that record collection. Um, a lot of which he had turned me on to earlier when like David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust, uh, uh, T-Rex, The Slider, Deep Purple, Machine Head, um, uh, all your classics and uh, King Crimson, you know, and Yes, and just whoever, right? So when I would know that he would go away I would sneak down there. He didn't have a lock on his door. So I'd sneak down and I'd get in his room and I'd turn the stereo on and I'd look for an album. I'd find an album to listen to. And um, I'd have to make sure that, you know, I bought the album, put the album back in the sleeve and in the cover, make the cover away, make sure that, he, you know, he could tell I was down there listening to it. So. But I took care of it. I mean, I I was careful. I didn't, uh, you know, I was very meticulous about the albums, taking care of them when I listened to them. So anyway, this is one particular night, and. 
and I remember it was in 1975, and Led Zeppelin had just come out with physical graffiti. And for some unknown reason, beyond my understanding at this time, because I don't really consider that a great album, I loved that album at that age, and I used to hear him playing it in the basement. Oh, I would hear all kinds of music coming up, you know, through the floor. I mean, everything. I was exposed to an endless amount of just, uh, just endless amount of culture, music culture, growing up. Like underground stuff even, but we'll get into that later. Um, so I snuck into the basement. My mom took him to his friend's house first, of course. I went with her. So my mom took him to, we, we, we went and took him to his friend's house. And he was going to be there for like three or four hours. We came back. I went down into the basement and I grabbed physical graffiti and I put it on the turntable. And I'm sitting there and I'm rocking out. And I'm blasting this album. It was just me and my dad at home. My dad was upstairs and he was playing the clarinet. So, all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, um, th there were two windows in that room, in that basement, and all of a sudden, out of the clear blue sky, I hear boom, 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 boom. I mean, somebody's like banging on the window. I mean, it was loud, and it scared the crap out of me. You can picture an 11-year-old in the basement at... 10 or 11 at night, you know, listening to physical graffiti by himself, and all of a sudden somebody's banging on your basement window, and it's dark outside, and you don't want to go over and look out the window. You're like, oh, man, I'm not going to part the curtains. I don't want to see, you know, who this is or what this is. So I run upstairs. I open the back door. I look out. I don't see anybody. I go in. I took my dad said, what the hell's going on? He comes running in there. And there's, then they're bang, now they're now they're banging on the other window on the other side of the house, whoever it was. So my dad goes out, flies out the back door, and my dad's you know one of them old Italian dudes, and he's a real short guy, and he's like, you know, small and mighty, you know they used to call him. So um, I'm like, oh man, this is crazy, right? So. Uh, I go into the dining room and I'm walking in and I look out the dining room window and I see this big dude <laughs> run by the window. I mean, he's chucking by the window really fast. And right behind him is my dad and he's got this axe and his, this, this hatchet in his hand. <laughs> he's like chasing this guy with this hatchet, man. I was like, holy crap, man. And uh, it just was like, oh, uh, I was like, and so finally, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't have used the hatchet on him, but he was trying to chain run him off, you know. So I go outside, and me and my dad are hanging outside, and, and he's just trying to figure, decide whether or not he should call the cops, and he didn't call the cops. So all of a sudden, we see these 10 guys, like, they're walking up on the street, and I said, my dad said, are you guys out here messing around? Are you screwing around out here knocking on my windows? And uh, No, we didn't do anything. But they were all friends of my brothers. They knew them. So, I mean, come to find out years later or later that week or whatever it was, we found out they thought it was my brother and they're listening to the music. And they came over to knock on the window to just pull his chain or just you know, get him to come out and talk or they wanted to hang out or whatever, you know. But it was kind of a funny, kind of a funny story. Um, well, incidentally, uh, getting back to the music, I mean, there was like an endless amount of music that I was exposed to in the early 70s growing up as a child. What I would consider the best music that's out there, okay, that ever was ever created. And um, we're talking artists, you know, and uh, this includes underground artists, uh, semi well known artists, uh, second rate, third rate, whatever. You know, of course, there's the first rate like Bowie, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple. Um, Aerosmith, um, and 
Queen and um, Rick Derringer and uh, just Yes and uh, Black Sabbath and um, I mean it's just endless. I mean, and there was the Underground Hawkwind, uh, Gong. There was um, oh, and then Rush. I mean, I Rush, incidentally, being one of my favorite bands ever. The very first time that I heard Rush, I was home from school sick that day. It was I was in um, seventh grade, and I was home sick. And um, it was 1976, and so um, I, my brothers. A better half at that time, or his woman at that time, uh, was in the basement. He wasn't there, and she was playing this this album. I mean, it was she was blasting it really loud, over and over again. And it was Rush, "Farewell to Kings," unbeknownst to me at the time, and so. I just like it just struck me like what what is what in the hell is this? I I've never heard anything like this before and the bass and the, the drums and it was just super cool and the more the album would play like I th I think I was like sick for like two or three days or something and every day I was hearing this album and it was grow it was like wow this is different at first I'm here this is different and then it just started growing me like this is really good I really like this I really truly like this it wasn't like somebody came up to me and said well you know here's Rush and this is what they sound like and this is what the drummer this is, the drummer's great no. So I didn't know who this was, and I asked, what is, what is that you're playing? Who is this? And they told me, it's, it's Rush, Farewell to, guys, Farewell to Kings, and they pulled the album cover out and showed it to me. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get, I love this, I gotta get this. And, um, you know, sometimes people will read a review about a band or they'll you know they'll read the hype about a band and they'll, um, you know say hey man I like that I'm gonna get into this band and try him out because I heard the drummers blah 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 great drummer and he's one of the best there is and I heard the guitar player that this wasn't like this at all this was like no sight but sound first and no reading just sound first it was awesome and that's basically what the deal was through the years. I was turned on to a lot of bands. And I remembered my brother uh, when I was about um, seven years old. Um, he brought David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust home. And um, I, was, I remember because I was sitting on the cellar steps. We had three steps that went out to the back door. And then we had the basement steps that went down from there. And he came up the steps and he said, do you see, do you see, this, do you see this guy? And he showed me the front cover. And it was just like, whoa. First of all, the cover, the, the picture, the colors, was just cool as anything. This dude with the guitar, this Bowie guy, just struck me as really, like, interesting. And he said, this guy's, see this guy? This guy's from outer space, man. He's a... He's an alien, he writes all these, you know, songs about being from outer space, and he's from outer space, and I don't know, it's just like, that to this day, I have never gotten tired of that album. That album is one of the all-time, in fact, it's my all-time favorite rock album to this day. It's David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust, well, actually, David Bowie, The Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars. Uh, caught my cigar on fire there.
Anyway, that's my story. And, um, that's it. So, I'm going to sit here and finish the cigar. And, uh, really great cigar. I highly recommend Drew Estate, Java, um, whichever one you want, Latte or Gordo, or I think they're, this is Toro, Maduro. And it's got the Maduro wrapper. And so I do not think the FDA regulations can actually touch these because these were around long before that. But we'll see what happens with all that. I don't know. That remains to be seen, right? Like the Zen master used to say, we'll see. <laughs> okay. As in the words of the Zen master, we shall see. And that's the end of the video. And I shall see you next time. Get a whole tribe with a fishy bread. I called him a commie and left him for dead. Landed a flower in Chicago. Damned if a mother loving flower would grow. Ain't that a way to make a wheel go, boy? Ain't that a way to make a wheel go?